Hello friends, Tom Downey here for Chat Sports. Back to talk some more NBA free agency. It is rapidly approaching and we're going to continue our look at some top free agents and where they could sign this year. Next up is Kemba Walker. Now, Walker is not a top five free agent, but he's pretty damn close. He's definitely in the top ten there. And I'm very curious to see what happens with Walker. He has said the Hornets are his top priority. He wants to be in Charlotte. He might even take less than the Supermax offer that the Hornets can give him. However, there are several other teams out there lurking and plotting if Walker and the Hornets don't get a deal done. Now, of course, we'll break down what the money could look like there for Kemba Walker. Of course, Hornets can offer him way more than anybody else. But in reality, he's definitely worth a max contract. Look at his last four years. They've been fantastic. Over 20 points per game, comes in with five and a half-ish assists per game, and offers about four rebounds per game. All this, by the way, on a pretty bad Charlotte Hornets team that he carries to around an eight seed pretty much every single year. He's a good three-point shooter. No, he's not a top 10 player in the NBA, but he's definitely worth a max contract. And the good news for Kemba, there are more max contract slots available than there actually are max caliber players. In the end, he is going to get paid by somebody. The real question is which team. Now we'll break down the top fits, but first, make sure you guys are subscribed to us on YouTube. Link is below there, but you're already watching on YouTube, so just hit the big button there. Get us to 120K. We're going to be there soon. Make sure you get in. And oh, by the way, we'll be live multiple times throughout NBA Free Agency, breaking all of the signings as they happen. So make sure you're subscribed to us here on YouTube. Take you now through the top six teams that could sign Kemba Walker. We did add one last second. You'll find out who in just a little bit. Now, the Pacers are a potential sleeper team for Kemba Walker. They have just enough cap space for a max contract there, and they're clearly looking for help at the point guard spot. They need an addition there. The way they operated during the draft, they traded for TJ Warren, which means they could lose Boyan Bogdanovich, but that means if they renounce his cap hold, well, then all of a sudden, they have enough space to go out and add a point guard. So here's what a Pacers lineup could look if look like if they were to add Kemba Walker. Now, of course, you have to get Victor Oladipo healthy, so kind of an asterisk there for now. TJ Warren was the trade addition there. Miles Turner, DeMontis Sabonis, and then Kemba Walker comes in. There's your, you know, maybe not full-on elite superstar, but borderline superstar type player. At worst, a star caliber player. All of a sudden, Kemba Walker, Miles Turner, Victor Oladipo, isn't that a top half seed in the Eastern Conference? Maybe they're not the Eastern Conference favorites, but they're spending money smartly there. They upgraded point guard. They still have TJ Warren, Sabonis, and the bench is kind of in flux there. TJ Leaf, Aaron Holiday, Doug McDermott, maybe. The rest of those guys are easily replaceable there with vet men guys. But I like this move for the Pacers if that's the route they want to go. But with money being a little bit on the tighter side, maybe instead of a max contract, they sign like a Patrick Beverly and another wing shooting guard. Maybe the ideal outcome for the Pacers is some combination, by the way, of Patrick Beverly and like Danny Green. Wouldn't that be a great offseason for them? I don't know, just spitballing here. Number five, the New York Knicks. Remember, they have cap space for two max contracts, and Walker is definitely an option if they miss out on the bigger names, i.e. Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving. Issue for the Knicks is they have missed a lot in the past. Is this the year it finally changes? There are reports, by the way, that the Knicks might say, eh, you know what, let's not go after very good players. Let's continue to wait and not pay big money and focus on somebody else in free agency and just sign one-year guys that are veterans that can help mentor our young players. But if the Knicks did bring in Kemba Walker, and only Kemba, let's say they can, maybe they add Julius Randle too, but we'll leave that blank for now. This would be your five best players. No bench because, well, there isn't really much of a bench to speak of right now in New York because nobody's under contract. But Kemba, R.J. Barrett, and then you bank on Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox showing some growth. Pretty good lineup there. Maybe you sign Julius Randle too, or ideally Kevin Durant. And then all of a sudden, well, that's a pretty darn good team. So the next decision will become, okay, if they miss on Kawhi, they miss on Durant, miss on Kyrie, which is a real possibility for New York, do they want to dip outside the top five freight and say, hey, let's add two of the guys in the top 10 or top 15. Now, speaking of top 10, where does Kemba Walker rank among NBA free agents this year? Let me know in the comments section. Rank him from 1 to 10. In reality, it's kind of in that 5-ish to 10 range. I have a tough time seeing you know, 10 players better in free agents than Kemba Walker. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. 
Let's move then to number four, hint, hint, our last second edition, because Mark Stein of the New York Times says Boston is a, quote, stealth suitor for Kemba, which, by the way, instantly makes them no longer stealth suitors because that means that it's not really stealth anymore. Now, Boston definitely has a need at point guard. Kyrie Irving, he's pretty much gone. Terry Rozier might be gone as well, and frankly, he's not the best point guard anyway. Boston does have the cap space for a max contract. So if they bring in Kemba Walker, here's what this lineup looks like. Kemba, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, Jason Tatum. Now maybe you put Hayward on the bench and you start someone like Grant Williams at the power forward spot instead. And we'll see about Robert Williams. I think center also a big need there. Maybe they could use the mid-level to get out and sign somebody at center as well. But for Boston, if you do want to focus on still trying to win right now while you have Gordon Hayward, while Tatum and Brown are still on their first contracts, Kemba makes some sense. Now, I think it might make a little bit more sense to target a 10 million point guard and a 10 million center. Maybe Patrick Beverly and, I don't know, DeMarcus Cousins. Mm, not Vucevic. It's probably too expensive there. DeAndre Jordan. I don't know. Spitball names there again. But if you want to go after Kemba, it's actually a pretty intriguing lineup. Again, not the Eastern Conference favorites like they were last year, but still a very good squad. Let's move then to number three, the LA Lakers. And yes, I know they are tight on cap space. They can find a, made, a way to make it work if they really, really want to. And they have interest, by the way, in adding a third star to pair with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. And they happen to desperately need point guard help. Now, yes, LeBron James is basically a point forward or point god, as I call him. But Isaac Bonga is the starting point guard right now. That's not going to get the job done. So here's a possible lineup if they add Kemba Walker. I'll throw Reggie Bullock in there because he's not under contract, but the Lakers have his bird rights, so they can go over the cap to sign him. That leaves LeBron, AD, Kuzma, and Kemba there. It's an intriguing lineup. I still think, especially for the Lakers, I know I've mentioned this for like the Celtics and for the Pacers, but for the Lakers, I'd probably go after a bunch of cheaper role players and say, you know what, let's pass on adding that third star. Let's add guys like J.J. Reddick, like Patrick Beverly, like a Danny Green, spend money on multiple players, not just one guy. But if they want to go after Kemba, look, you can do a lot worse than throwing money at Kemba Walker, you know, even if you do want to give him Mozgov money. Number two, the Dallas Mavericks. They are the top threat to poach Kemba Walker away from the Charlotte Hornets. And remember, they have the cap space to add a max contract player, and they clearly want a third star to pair with Kristaps and Luka. And they would like a ball handling star too, because Luka can definitely do that, but you probably want someone to help him out in that regard. So you bring in Kemba Walker, all of a sudden this team is really good. I think a playoff caliber team, if not a possible top half Western Conference team. You have Dwight Powell at center, Tim Hardaway still on that roster, and maybe you could get creative and ship out like a Courtney Lee and find a way to add Al Horford somewhere. I know that's kind of like the pipe dream right now for Dallas. Don't know how feasible it actually is, but it is a theory that's out there. And your bench is, has some decent options there, namely Justin Jackson, Jalen Brunson, and you'd find more guys in your free agency as well. Now, speaking of the Mavs, this one's just for you, Jimmy. Who will the Mavs land in free agency? Let us know in the comments section there. Maybe it's the pipe dream of Al Horford and Kemba Walker. Ooh, maybe, maybe Kawhi Leonard, who the Mavs reportedly might get a visit with, although that still feels even more unlikely. I thought about the Mavs hard at number one. It's really 1A and 1B here, but the Hornets check in at the top spot. Remember, Kemba says he wants to resign, although he's not going to say otherwise. Like, that's not how players and teams ever operate. And for Charlotte, they have the ace in the hole, namely all of the money they can offer him. The Hornets can pay him over $9 million per year more than any other team. That's a significant amount with that super max contract, 44.2 per year versus other teams being, being able to offer 35 million per year. Here's my issue though. And it's not a knock by the way on Kemba. He's a fantastic player. He's a top 10 free agent this year, obvious. The issue for Charlotte is this team isn't that good still. This is your lineup. You got MKG, Bridges, maybe he starts over Batum at some point in the very near future. Malik Monk is there. But this team, even with the addition of PJ Washington, this is what, capped as an eight seed? And for Charlotte, if you pay Kemba, that puts you really close, if not already over the luxury tax, unless you can make other trades there. I'll tell you what, Michael Jordan, he doesn't want to pay that luxury tax for a team that might not make the postseason. Because the Hornets have some really bad contracts on the book for the next 
year and year plus. But Toom is going to make two years as two years left in his deal with an average of 26.4 million. He's putting up 9.3 points per game. Bismack Biyama makes 17, put up 4.4 points per game. Marvin Williams overpaid. MKG overpaid. Cody Zeller has two more years at just under 15 million per year. So if the Charlotte Hornets re-sign Kemba Walker, now they're out of money. You can make trades if you want, but it's really not going to drastically improve your team there. So here's my question. Should the Hornets give Kemba Walker the Supermax? If this were a different team, yes, sure. Here's my fear for Charlotte. You're already maxed as a 780. Maybe that changes in two years. Maybe it doesn't. Either way, you're already paying Kemba like $44 million per year. Going to be tough to actually make roster moves. So if I'm the Hornets, as much as I love Kemba Walker, I don't want to be caught as being an average team that's fitting just outside the uh, NBA draft lottery or like, you know, at 13, 14, somewhere in that range. Maybe it actually makes more sense in the long term to say, Kemba, you're awesome. Go get paid by the Mavs, but we're going to go ahead and let you walk and embrace a rebuilding period for the best interest of our long term franchise. All right, folks, again, here are the top teams that could sign Kemba Walker. Number one, the Charlotte Hornets. Number two, the Mavs. Number three, the Lakers. Number four, the Boston Celtics. Number five, the New York Knicks. And number six, the Indiana Pacers. That was my top six, but I want to hear from you guys as well. What team do you think will sign Kemba Walker? I think the Hornets and the Mavs are the top two threats. Maybe there's a different team I didn't mention. If so, let me know in the comments section.